Hey everybody, it's K-Ball here from Zurb. In today's lesson, we're gonna be kicking off a brand new tutorial series. This will be a Flexbox tutorial series. It'll have seven parts and we'll cover everything you need to know about Flexbox. Now, if you've been watching us for a while, you know that I get really excited about Flexbox. Flexbox! Today, to kick things off, I'm gonna talk about why you should get really excited about Flexbox. Flexbox! We'll talk about what Flexbox is, cover what are all the use cases, when you'd use it, how you use it, what it enables, and we'll talk a little bit about browser support and when you decide, should I be using Flexbox or something else? So, let's get right into it. All right, so let's get started. First off, let's talk about what Flexbox is. So the CSS Flexbox or Flexible Blocks Layout Module is a relatively new specification for a CSS box model that is optimized for UI design. So essentially what happened is the CSS working group looked at all the various layouts people were using and that they were trying to achieve and struggling with and then designed a specification that makes it straightforward to implement those layouts. And what the Flexbox specification defines is a layout model that uh, lets you lay things out easily vertically and horizontally and lets you flex the sizes of elements by growing or shrinking them dynamically based on rules that you define. So why Flexbox? Uh, why would you want to do it? So it solves a number of problems that have been with us since the beginning of the web and we're gonna dive through a few of those uh, right now. Um, the first big one that I wanna cover is something that's uh, near and dear to us at Foundation, which is grids. Um, so if we look quickly at the uh, traditional foundation float grid, I have a demo up here from our docs on the float grid. Um, there's a few key elements that make float-based grids messy. So before Flexbox, if you wanted to define a grid, you were pretty much stuck with either uh, inline block elements or float elements. Um, and inline block has a whole bunch of spacing, white space issues. So pretty much everybody does float-based grids or did float-based grids before Flexbox. Uh, the problems with this, there's two major problems. So if we look real quick uh, at the rows in our float-based grid um, and we inspect them using the Chrome inspector, we scroll down, what we'll see is that to get float-based grids to work properly, you have to clear all the elements inside the float, uh, which relies on some properties on the before and after uh, attributes of your row. Uh, you're basically doing a clear fix hack. This is 100% a hack. Uh, it's just one that people have been using forever to, to get floats to do things they were never designed to do. Um, problems with that are that one, you've got to have that hack and have it work properly. So, you know, it took a lot of work to get the grids in place and creating your own custom grid with a float grid is a little challenging because you got to make sure the Clarifix stuff works properly. Um, second, it means that you can't use the before and after uh, pseudo elements on that row. Um, so there's just a whole bunch of stuff that you can't do. Uh, the other big problem uh, with float grids is that they 100% require explicit sizing. There's no way to say in a float grid, hey, this thing, it should take up whatever space is available to it. You've always got to size it um, for, to say exactly how it's going to lay out. Enter Flexbox. So the Flexbox grid, um, and I'm going to jump over to a Flexbox grid demo. This is using the foundation Flexbox grid. Uh, it's super simple, right? Uh, you don't need to deal with any of these complicated uh, clearing. If you look at the row, uh, there's nothing on the pseudo elements. It's just declared as a flex parent um, using display flex. And don't worry if some of the terminology I'm using is uh, over your head. It won't be by the end of the tutorial series. Um, as, when we, as we go through this Flexbox tutorial series, we'll cover each of these items in detail. Uh, but it's just much simpler. Uh, and you can actually do dynamic sizing. So you don't have to necessarily specify how many uh, how big your columns are, you can make them shrink, you can make them grow, you can do all sorts of other stuff. Other big items in Flexbox, reasons to use Flexbox. Um, so horizontal alignment is one. So before Flexbox, you either explicitly size things to get them to align properly, um, or you can align things to the left, and you can align things to the right, but stuff in the middle is complicated. With Flexbox, you actually get fine grain control where you can align things all to the left, align them all to the right, just like you would with floats, but you can also center things, you can uh, justify space around them, you can justify space between them. Uh, super flexible, super powerful. We'll dive into the underlying attributes for this 
in, I think, the next tutorial, or the next lesson next week. For uh, another big benefit of Flexbox, reason to use Flexbox, is vertical alignment. Before Flexbox, mucking around with your vertical alignment was really painful. You'd use the vertical align property of CSS and have to continually tweak it and, and mess with it. It never did quite the right thing. Uh, you often end up carefully controlling your line height, the height of your element. Uh, it's very explicit, very challenging to align across multiple elements. With Flexbox, uh, it's there by default. You basically have a single property that you can use. You can align things so that they're all the same size. We'll talk about heights and how valuable it is. You can center things based on their content. You can align them to the top, align them to the bottom. It's just a trivial use of properties. Uh, these items that used to be super challenging to do are now essentially trivial with Flexbox. Uh, another big area is auto widths. So I mentioned with the grid, we had to be explicit about our widths, but with a Flexbox based grid, you or a Flexbox based anything, you can automatically shrink things, you can expand things to fill uh, space needed, you can shrink them. So if we, instead of having this be small four, we change it to something like a shrink um, and run, that'll shrink to use only the space it needs. So it's super easy to manipulate spacing. You can not only be explicit, you can still be explicit, but you can also auto expand, auto shrink, your containers, your elements are now flexible in their sizes. Um, another big area is equal heights. Uh, I mentioned this really quickly as we went through this when we talked about alignment, but it used to be if you wanted things to all be the same height, you had to use JavaScript to do it. Foundation ships with the equalizer plugin to let you do that. With Flexbox, it's automatic that you get that by default. Things just line up height wise. One other really fun thing you can do with Flexbox uh, that super powerful is you can actually read or swap around the orientation. So all of our examples so far have been with a horizontal orientation, but Flexbox actually thinks of things in terms of a vector. So while that vector by default is horizontal, you can actually orient the vector to be vertical as well by setting a direction of column. And now you can lay things out in the vertical direction just in the same way with the same levels of control, the same amount of alignment and all of that sort of thing that you could horizontally. Uh, this does raise a sort of thing to wrap your head around, a, a challenging point, which is all the tools that we use to deal with alignment and spacing are actually in Flexbox aligned with the vector rather than thinking explicitly it'll be about X and Y. Uh, we'll cover that in a little more detail shortly. Um, one final point to mention is ordering. Uh, so pre-Flexbox, if you wanted to change up the ordering of things on a mobile screen versus a uh, desktop screen or something like that, it could be super complicated. Um, you'd have to uh, change around the, um, you know, do complicated pushes and pulls based on media query. But with Flexbox, there is an explicit order property. And all you have to do is set that order property. And so you could just put that inside of a media query. So if I, for example, wanted to make my auto here, it's currently first um, on desktop, but say I want it to be last on desktop. All I need to do, all I need to do, I'm gonna give it a class. Um, so I'm gonna label it last on desktop. Um, if we scroll down to find it, here it is, last on desktop. So if we take our last on desktop and we want to apply that, all we have to do is set an order property uh, inside a media query. So we'll put a media query in here and we'll just do something like min width, uh, 50 RAM or something like that. And we'll say last on desktop, which is our class, and give it this order property. I'm gonna just say three. And you can see immediately that it shifted down to the bottom. If we go down to a smaller size, it's still at the front. So Switching up your order to build a responsive layout. So where you might use this is you have, you know, for example, an image that lays out to the right on desktop, but you want it to come first on mobile or something similar. Uh, doing that type of approach, which used to be really tricky and painful, is now super simple. Uh, so when do you use Flexbox? Uh, my first answer, because I love Flexbox, is anytime you can get away with it. Uh, but there's a little bit more than that. So if we look at the browser support on can I use for Flexbox, um, and we'll actually click to show all, we can see that it's pretty well supported in modern browsers. Uh, there are some bugs in the IE10 uh, 
version of Flexbox and to support IE and various other things, you do need to use uh, either prefixes or what we recommend is auto prefixer to generate all the various forms of Flexbox that it took as it was evolving. But if you're willing to use a prefixer and you don't need to support IE9, you're pretty much good to go. Um, and so you should be able to use Flexbox for most of your projects uh, in the modern world. I think IE9 at this point, yeah, in the US it has 0.3% browser share and globally it's even smaller. So tons of opportunity to use Flexbox. It's super powerful. Um, where is it useful? So it's really useful at two levels. Um, one, you can talk about layouts, right? So obviously we're using doing grids based on Flexbox, super powerful there. Um, though with the rise of CSS grid, uh, CSS grid will put eventually take over for full screen layouts. Uh, but for right now, Flexbox for layouts, super powerful. But you can also use it within your UI. All of those alignment tools and all of the sort of vertical alignment, horizontal alignment, stretch and grow, super powerful. And we've actually got a number of lessons referencing Flexbox for cards and using Flexbox helpers um, that you can check out as well uh, to see some use for that. So that about wraps us up for why and you should use Flexbox, what it is, what it gets you, and we'll get back to more later. All right, that's it for today's lesson. You've learned about Flexbox, what it is, what the benefits are, some examples of use, and when you're going to be able to use it. Next week, we'll dive deep into the Flexbox properties, giving you fine-grained control over how you use Flexbox. If you don't want to miss the lesson, make sure you subscribe right up here. And for every subscriber, the Yeti's going to get a fidget spinner. All right, that's it for this week. K-Ball, signing out.